The concept of hell has intrigued and terrified human minds for millennia. Across cultures and religions, there is a shared belief in an underworld where sinners face eternal punishment. Within this dark domain, various entities reign, each embodying a particular vice or sin. Among these entities are the kings of hell, powerful demonic figures who command legions of lesser demons and preside over realms dedicated to the perpetuation of sin and suffering. In this comprehensive exploration, we delve into the origins of the concept of hell, examine the hierarchical structure of its infernal realms, and meticulously scrutinize the identities and characteristics of the kings of hell. Through this journey, we aim to unravel the intricacies of these malevolent beings, decipher their cultural significance, and probe the psychological and philosophical insights they offer into the human condition. Origins of the Concept of Hell The concept of hell is deeply rooted in human history and spans numerous cultures and religious traditions. In ancient Mesopotamia, the belief in an underworld ruled by deities such as Ereshkigal and Nergal was prevalent. This realm was viewed as a desolate place where the spirits of the dead dwelled in perpetual darkness. In ancient Egypt, the afterlife was depicted as a complex journey through various realms, including the Duat, where the deceased underwent judgment before Osiris, the god of the dead. Those deemed unworthy faced annihilation or eternal torment. The ancient Greeks envisioned the underworld as the realm of Hades, god of the dead, where souls were ferried across the river Styx by Charon, and face judgment before the three-headed dog Cerberus. Punishment in Tartarus awaited those guilty of grievous sins. Christianity, Judaism and Islam have significantly influenced contemporary conceptions of hell. In Christianity, hell is depicted as a place of eternal punishment reserved for the wicked and rebellious souls who have defied God's will. The Bible describes hell as a lake of fire and brimstone, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Hierarchy of Hell The hierarchical structure of hell varies across religious traditions and mythologies. In Christian theology, hell is often depicted as having different levels or circles, each reserved for specific sins or categories of sinners. The most severe punishment is reserved for Satan, the fallen angel who rebelled against God and his cohorts known as demons. Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy popularized the concept of hell as having nine concentric circles, each representing a particular sin with Satan imprisoned at its center. This hierarchical organization reflects Dante's moral worldview where sins are categorized based on their severity and proximity to the divine. In demonology, the hierarchy of hell is often structured according to the seven deadly sins, pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. Each sin is associated with a particular demon or entity who embodies its essence and presides over a realm dedicated to its perpetuation. The Kings of Hell Within the hierarchy of hell, the kings of hell occupy positions of supreme authority, commanding legions of demons and overseeing the domains associated with their respective sins. While the identities and characteristics of these demonic monarchs may vary across religious traditions and cultural interpretations, several figures recur frequently in demonological lore Below, we examine seven prominent kings of hell and their associated sins. Lucifer, the morning star. Lucifer, also known as Satan or the devil, is perhaps the most infamous of the kings of hell. According to Christian tradition, Lucifer was once a beautiful and powerful angel who rebelled against God out of pride and ambition. Cast out of heaven, he became the ruler of hell and the embodiment of all evil. As the prince of darkness, Lucifer embodies the sin of pride, considering himself equal to or superior to God. His rebellion against divine authority 
serves as a cautionary tale against the dangers of arrogance and hubris. In Milton's Paradise Lost, Lucifer is depicted as a tragic figure, capable of profound intellect and charisma, but ultimately undone by his own pride and defiance. His fall from grace symbolizes the consequences of disobedience and the corrupting influence of unchecked ambition. Mammon, the demon of greed. Mammon is the demon associated with the sin of greed or avarice. In Christian demonology, Mammon is depicted as a devious and covetous entity who tempts mortals with promises of wealth and material abundance. Those who succumb to Mammon's influence become enslaved by their desire for worldly possessions, sacrificing virtue and compassion for the pursuit of wealth. The name Mammon is derived from an Aramaic word meaning wealth or riches, emphasizing the demon's association with materialism and the relentless pursuit of financial gain. In popular culture, Mammon is often portrayed as a malevolent force lurking behind the trappings of wealth and success, corrupting individuals and institutions with its insatiable appetite for riches. Asmodeus, the demon of lust. Asmodeus is the demon associated with the sin of lust or carnal desire. In demonology, Asmodeus is depicted as a seductive and manipulative entity who preys upon human weakness, tempting mortals with illicit pleasures and forbidden desires. His influence leads to moral degradation and spiritual ruin, as individuals indulge their basest instincts at the expense of their virtue and integrity. The name Asmodeus is derived from Persian and Hebrew roots, meaning demon of wrath or destroyer. In Jewish folklore, Asmodeus is portrayed as a powerful and malevolent figure who is responsible for spreading discord and temptation among humanity. He is often depicted as a creature of immense physical beauty, concealing his true nature beneath a veneer of charm and allure. Leviathan, the serpent of envy. Leviathan is the demon associated with the sin of envy or jealousy. In demonology, Leviathan is depicted as a monstrous sea serpent, symbolizing the destructive power of resentment and bitterness. Those who fall under Leviathan's sway are consumed by feelings of inadequacy and spite, coveting the possessions and achievements of others while despising their own lot in life. The name Leviathan is derived from Hebrew mythology, where it is described as a primordial sea monster representing chaos and disorder. In Christian demonology, Leviathan is associated with the concept of spiritual warfare, symbolizing the forces of darkness that seek to undermine God's plan for humanity. Beelzebub, the Lord of Gluttony. Beelzebub is the demon associated with the sin of gluttony or excessive indulgence. In demonology, Beelzebub is depicted as a grotesque and voracious entity who tempts mortals with the pleasures of food and drink, leading them into a cycle of overconsumption and self-destruction. His influence breeds physical and spiritual decay as individuals prioritize their appetites over their health and well-being. The name Beelzebub is derived from Hebrew roots, meaning Lord of the Flies or Lord of Filth. In Christian demonology, Beelzebub is often portrayed as a subordinate of Satan, serving as his emissary in the earthly realm. He is associated with the degradation of the flesh and the corruption of the soul, symbolizing the consequences of unrestrained hedonism. Satan, the adversary. Satan, also known as the adversary, is a central figure in demonology and the embodiment of temptation, deceit, and rebellion against divine authority. In various religious traditions, Satan is depicted as a cunning and malevolent entity who seeks to lead humanity astray and undermine the will of God. The name Satan is derived from Hebrew and Greek roots, meaning adversary or accuser. In Christian demonology, Satan is often portrayed as the chief antagonist of God and the leader of the fallen angels who rebelled against heaven. 
His domain is a realm of darkness and despair, where the souls of the damned suffer eternal torment for their defiance of divine law. Belfigor, the Demon of Sloth. Belfigor is the demon associated with the sin of sloth or laziness. In demonology, Belfigor is depicted as a lethargic and a pathetic entity who tempts mortals with the promise of easy and comfort, leading them into a state of spiritual torpor and stagnation. His influence breeds complacency and indifference as individuals forsake their duties and responsibilities in favor of idleness and inertia. The name Belphegor is derived from Assyrian and Canaanite roots, meaning Lord of the Opening or Lord of the Gap. In Christian demonology, Belphegor is often portrayed as a demonic deity associated with licentiousness and debauchery. He is depicted as a figure of grotesque indolence, reclining upon a throne of skulls and reveling in the degradation of human potential. Mundus, the worldly temptation. Mundus represents the allure of worldly pleasures and material distractions. While not traditionally counted among the kings of hell, Mundus holds significant influence over mortal souls, tempting them with the transient joys and comforts of the material world. Mortals who succumb to Mundus's temptations become ensnared in the pursuit of wealth, fame, and sensual gratification, forsaking spiritual growth and moral integrity. In demonology, Mundus is often depicted as a subtle and insidious force, whispering promises of success and fulfillment to those who heed its call. Its domain encompasses the mundane aspects of human existence, enticing mortals with the illusion of happiness and contentment while leading them away from the path of righteousness. Lilith, the Seductress Lilith is a prominent figure in Jewish folklore and demonology, often associated with seduction, temptation and female empowerment. According to myth, Lilith was the first wife of Adam, created from the same earth as him, unlike Eve, who was made from Adam's rib. However, Lilith refused to submit to Adam and fled from the Garden of Eden, becoming a demoness associated with night and darkness. In demonology, Lilith is depicted as a seductive and vengeful entity who preys upon men, particularly during the night. She is often portrayed as a succubus, luring unsuspecting victims into her embrace and draining them of their life force. Lilith's domain is a realm of lust and desire, where mortal souls are ensnared by her charms and enslaved to her will. Iblis, the rebel. In Islamic demonology, Iblis is the equivalent of Satan in Christianity. Iblis was once a devout and righteous angel, but he refused to bow to Adam when commanded by God, arguing that he was superior to humans as he was made of fire while Adam was made of clay. As a result of his defiance, Iblis was cast out of heaven and became the chief adversary of humanity. In Islamic tradition, Iblis is depicted as a cunning and malevolent figure who seeks to lead humans astray and undermine their faith in God. His domain is a realm of deception and temptation where he preys upon the weaknesses and vulnerabilities of mortals, enticing them to commit sin and disobedience. Dracula, the Vampire Lord Dracula, while often depicted as a fictional character in literature and popular culture, has roots in historical figures such as Vlad the Impaler. In demonological interpretations, Dracula is portrayed as a powerful vampire lord who embodies the sins of lust, gluttony and wrath. As a vampire, Dracula symbolizes the predatory nature of sin, preying upon the innocent and corrupting them with his dark influence. His domain is a realm of eternal night where the undead roam and the living are consumed by their darkest desires. Baal, the demon of leadership and ambition. Baal, also known as Baal, is a demon mentioned in various occult grimoires and demonological texts. In demonology, Baal is depicted as a powerful and influential entity 
who holds sway over matters of leadership, ambition, and conquest. He is often invoked in rituals and ceremonies aimed at gaining power, wealth, and dominion over others. The name Baal is derived from Hebrew and Canaanite roots, meaning Lord or Master. In occult traditions, Baal is often depicted as a king or prince of hell, commanding legions of demons and presiding over infernal realms dedicated to the pursuit of power and dominance. Baal is associated with themes of ambition, aspiration, and the relentless pursuit of one's goals. Those who seek his aid are promised success and prosperity, but at a cost, as Baal demands unwavering loyalty and obedience in return. He represents the temptations of power and authority, enticing mortals with promises of greatness while leading them down a path of corruption and damnation. Belial, the demon of lawlessness and rebellion. Belial is a demon mentioned in various religious texts and demonological traditions. In demonology, Belial is depicted as a figure of lawlessness and rebellion, opposing divine authority and sowing discord among mortals. He is often associated with themes of chaos, anarchy, and the breakdown of societal norms. The name Belial is derived from Hebrew roots, meaning worthless or wicked. In Jewish and Christian demonology, Belial is often portrayed as a tempter and deceiver who leads mortals astray with promises of freedom and autonomy. He is associated with the forces of darkness and dissolution, seeking to undermine the order and harmony established by divine law. Belial is often invoked in rituals and ceremonies aimed at subverting authority and challenging the status quo. He represents the spirit of rebellion and defiance, urging mortals to reject societal norms and embrace their primal instincts. However, his influence ultimately leads to chaos and destruction, as those who follow him are consumed by their own lawlessness and depravity. The Nature of Evil the nature of evil is a topic of perennial debate among theologians, philosophers, and psychologists alike. Some argue that evil is an inherent aspect of human nature, stemming from our capacity for selfishness and cruelty. Others believe that evil is a supernatural force, embodied by entities such as the kings of hell. Psychological Perspectives on Demons from a psychological perspective, demons can be seen as metaphors for the darker aspects of the human psyche, such as fear, anger, and desire. By confronting these inner demons, individuals can gain insight into their own motivations and behavior, and ultimately achieve a greater sense of self-awareness and self-control. Strategies for Confrontation and Redemption Confronting the kings of hell is no easy task, yet it is not impossible. Through self-reflection, spiritual practice, and moral courage, individuals can overcome the temptations and temptations that lead them astray. By acknowledging their own weaknesses and striving for personal growth, they can reclaim their agency and forge a path towards redemption. Conclusion in the depths of hell, the kings of darkness reign supreme, their power extending across the realms of both the mortal and the divine. Yet, even as they tempt and torment humanity, they are also a remainder of the enduring power of the human spirit and the capacity of individuals to overcome even the greatest of adversities. As long as there is light, there will always be hope and the promise of redemption for those who dare to confront the darkness within. Reflections on the Kings of Hell The Kings of Hell are not merely figures of myth and legend, but potent symbols of humanity's darkest impulses and desires. From the pride of Lucifer to the greed of Mammon, they embody the vices that threaten to consume us all, if left unchecked. The Continuing Influence of Darkness While the influence of the kings of hell may wane and wax over time, their legacy endures, 
shaping the course of human history and the destiny of nations. As long as there are those who succumb to temptation and despair, the kings of hell will continue to hold sway over the hearts and minds of mortals. The Nature of Evil The nature of evil is a topic of perennial debate among theologians, philosophers and psychologists alike. Some argue that evil is an inherent aspect of human nature, stemming from our capacity for selfishness and cruelty. Others believe that evil is a supernatural force, embodied by entities such as the kings of hell. Psychological Perspectives on Demons From a psychological perspective, demons can be seen as metaphors for the darker aspects of the human psyche, such as fear, anger and desire. By confronting these inner demons, individuals can gain insight into their own motivations and behavior and ultimately achieve a greater sense of self-awareness and self-control. Strategies for Confrontation and Redemption Confronting the kings of hell is no easy task, yet it is not impossible. Through self-reflection, spiritual practice and moral courage, individuals can overcome the temptations and temptations that lead them astray. By acknowledging their own weaknesses and striving for personal growth, they can reclaim their agency and forge a path towards redemption. Conclusion In the depths of hell, the kings of darkness reign supreme, their power extending across the realms of both the mortal and the divine. Yet, even as they tempt and torment humanity, they are also a remainder of the enduring power of the human spirit and the capacity of individuals to overcome even the greatest of adversities. As long as there is light, there will always be hope and the promise of redemption for those who dare to confront the darkness within. Reflections on the Kings of Hell The Kings of Hell are not merely figures of myth and legend, but potent symbols of humanity's darkest impulses and desires. From the pride of Lucifer to the greed of Mammon, they embody the vices that threaten to consume us all, if left unchecked. The Continuing Influence of Darkness While the influence of the kings of hell may wane and wax over time, their legacy endures, shaping the course of human history and the destiny of nations. As long as there are those who succumb to temptation and despair, the kings of hell will continue to hold sway over the hearts and minds of mortals.